So as we set up studying for the shoulder complex, all the muscles and functions, let's start with the motions. So the shoulder complex is made up of many joints. The one that does the major motion is the glenohumeral joint. And so let's first look at the major motions of the glenohumeral joint. So we first have flexion and extension in the sagittal plane. We have AB and adduction in the frontal plane and medial and lateral rotation in the horizontal plane. We also have this added on um, motion called horizontal AD and abduction. And that is when you abduct your glenohumeral joint to 90 degrees and then you can do horizontal AB and adduction. So as you go through all the muscles, you need to, to sort them by which ones do which function. But we also have something called scapulohumeral rhythm. So the scapula rotates one degree for every two degrees of movement of the humerus. So it basically increases the range of motion at the glenohumeral joint. So if we did not have any scapular humeral rhythm or any scapular motion, we would abduct our glenohumeral joint to about 90 degrees and our greater tubercle would hit our acromion process and that would limit our range of motion. But we have this whole other movement aside from our glenohumeral joint of the scapula that basically assists the glenohumeral joint. So you need to know the muscles that move the glenohumeral joint and there's a whole subset of muscles that move the scapula. So let's look at those scapular motions. We have elevation of the scapula, depression of the scapula, kind of a shrug. We have adduction of the scapula, which is kind of sticking your chest out and taking those medial borders of the scapula and putting them closer to the spinous processes. And we have abduction, or protraction, of the scapula, which is taking those medial borders away from the spinous processes, rounding your shoulders, kind of when you're texting or on your computer. Then we have upward and downward rotation of the scapula. Upward rotation allows us to have this huge, almost 180 degree of um, range of motion for our glenohumeral joint. You need a point of reference when you're talking about upward and downward rotation. I use the glenoid fossa. When it starts to point up, that's upward rotation. When it moves and it's pointing down, that is downward rotation. So you're going to have to align each muscle, the scapular muscles that go to each of these scapular motions. Another thing that you should do when you're going through this is set up internal and external torques for every plane of motion of the shoulder complex. So here we have the frontal plane, we have our center of rotation at the glenohumeral joint, we're picking up this pink weight which is applying an external force down due to gravity, um, and it has an external moment arm which is the perpendicular distance from the line of uh, center of rotation to the line of axis of force. So it has a very long moment arm times that external force is creating a large adductor torque at the glenohumeral joint and that is being opposed by an abductor torque, which is due to the muscle force or the internal force of the deltoid in this case from its attachment point acting um, at a diagonal times the internal moment arm, which is the perpendicular distance from the internal force to the center of rotation. So you have an internal torque and that's counterbalancing the external torque. And do this for flexion extension medial lateral rotation, and even horizontal AB and adduction.